Today's gospel comes to us from Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. The man said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When he heard this, the man was shocked and went away grieving for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who, who are first will be last, and the last will be first. So today's gospel has the disciples perplexed and asking extra questions. And seemingly, as always, it has Peter saying, look, Jesus, we've done a good job, right? Jesus is pretty exacting today. Jesus is telling the rich man and consequently the disciples to leave behind all the markings of independence and success, all the things that would allow a person to make the best sacrifices in the temple, all the possessions that would allow someone to be not only self-sufficient and be able to pass down an inheritance to their heirs, but to even have a little left over to give to the poor. Jesus is telling the rich man and consequently the disciples that they need to leave behind all the things that make everyone else think that God loves them best. What Jesus is saying is nothing short of revolutionary. It was then and it still is now. Jesus knows that when we are wealthy enough to live into the illusion that we are totally independent, that wealth separates us from our neighbor and it separates us from God. That wealth allows us to live into the myth of self-determination, the myth that we are able to control our own destiny. The fact is we're not. So Jesus isn't asking the man to give a little out of what he has. He is calling the man to take the radical step of coming out of his own independence and into vulnerability, into interdependence on God and on his own community. Only in being vulnerable, Jesus says, is the man able to inherit eternal life. Only in being vulnerable is the man able to experience the kingdom of God. The camel going through the eye of the needle is such a ubiquitous piece of Christian cultural history that everyone seems to know what you're talking about, whether they grew up in the faith or not. But it's not as straightforward as you might think. The Greek word kamelos is the word for camel, but it's also the word for a piece of thick yarn or rope, possibly made out of camel hair. Mark was likely making a play on words. 
knowing that his hearers would understand both meanings. But in English, we had to pick one to make the translation work. I have a suspicion that the reason the word camel became the accepted translation here is because it is impossible. It's something we can't do anything about. And so it's easier for us to throw up our hands and do nothing, acting under the assumption that God will go ahead and do it for us so we don't have to do anything. Think about it, we do it all the time. Whenever we decide a problem is just too big to do anything about, even when there are obvious first steps we could be taking, whenever we are conditioned to believe we must do everything or nothing, we are trying to put a camel through the eye of a needle. We've been told that climate change, gun safety laws, health insurance, and now even COVID are problems too big to solve. Then we must live with how they are now because the interests the current system serve are too big to fail. And by throwing up our hands, by refusing to make any change at all and insisting that God will just do it all for us at some point, we are refusing to do precisely what Jesus is calling us to do in this passage. That is, to be vulnerable and open to the change that is necessary for us to experience the kingdom of God. Jesus gave the man a clear step to take. It was not an easy one. Jesus told the man in love, to go and do the hard thing, to sell his possessions and give the money to the poor. He told the man exactly what he needed to do to inherit the kingdom of heaven, to bring God's kingdom here on earth. Because the richer we get, the more independent we are, the more we separate ourselves from others, the more we separate ourselves from God. We start to believe we don't need anyone or anything else. Jesus is asking us to allow ourselves to be pulled apart like thick yarn passing through the eye of a needle. Jesus is calling us to be changed. And like the rich man, we don't want to change. Now, there's another side note here. Besides the times that Mark mentions love in relationship to loving God or neighbor, this is the only time the the word love shows up in the entire Gospel of Mark. The one and only time this word shows up is when Jesus is telling an earnest, young, rich man how he must change in order to participate in God's kingdom. Jesus knows he is asking him to do a very hard thing. And yet, Jesus is telling him the truth in love. So this isn't out of animosity or some weird Herculean challenge. This is the truthful answer to the man's question, delivered in a loving way. And although I do believe that the heart of this message is about how our possessions get in the way of a deep godly love for our community and for God, and I do not want to diminish that, I also want to challenge you to consider the other ways you're hanging on to things that keep you separated from others, that keep you from being vulnerable especially on this national coming out weekend. Perhaps you're thinking about sharing your whole self with the people you love the most. If that's true, and if you're really ready, remember that there will be stuff you'll have to leave behind in order to pass through the eye of that needle. Stuff that seems so important right now that it's hard to imagine putting down. But that on the other side of it, it will be a relief to put it down and you'll be able to have a more real relationship with the people who love you the most. Or maybe you're waiting for someone you love to come out or expecting that it might happen in order for that relationship to grow in truth and in honesty, you're gonna have to allow yourself to set some things down to pull apart the ways that you might have tied up another person in certain expectations that don't match who God has made them to be. Because while Jesus tells us that this process will be difficult, Jesus also promises that it will be worth it. Jesus came to turn the world upside down. The last will be first and the first will be last. The things we once thought were so important turn out not to be, at least not to God. It's a message that still doesn't make any sense. And yet it's a message we still need to hear today and every day. Any real change requires choices, and any choice requires us to say no to the things that are preventing that change. 
Jesus is calling us to set down the things we think we need to hang on to, but which in reality are burdening us and separating us from God's love and from the love of our community. What do you need to put down? What do you need to set aside? God calls us to a life lived ever more closely intertwined with our communities. And God promises us that the reward for that vulnerability is worth the cost. Amen.